today is our last day in Banja Luka and if you watched our video yesterday you know we failed at attempting to see all of the sites around town so we are taking attempt two to do that today and we are on our way to our first stop. We're outside of the church right now and honestly we're having a little bit of trouble finding what it is. It seems like on Google people get this mistaken with the church in the center of town which is the more famous one and I can kind of see why they look fairly similar. I feel like kind of similar is an understatement. I think they look incredibly similar. They do. So much so that when we passed by this on our first day in town, I totally thought it was the most popular one because they're just styled exactly the same. I think we're just going to walk around for a little bit and see what we can learn, see if there's any plaques or anything. But other than that, we don't have a ton of information on it right now. So after doing a little bit of research, it turns out there's a really good reason why it looks really similar to the cathedral in the center of town. The cathedral in the center of the town was built in the late 30s, right before World War II. And during World War II, through bombings and other demolition efforts, the, that other church was destroyed. Then after that, for, for a period of a few decades, the country was under socialist rule, and so they weren't allowed to rebuild that church. But during the 60s, they built this church instead as a memorial to the church in the center of town. So it looks very, very similar. And they built it because they never thought they would be able to rebuild the other church. But then in the 90s, during the Bosnian War, they were able to rebuild the church in the center. But now they have the original church and the memorial to the church. So two very similar looking churches in pretty close parts of town. A really interesting bit of history. We're currently at the Roman Catholic Diocese of Banja Luka, and I didn't see much about this. All I saw online was the statue at the front, but I think what we think is the coolest thing is definitely this tower. It was built in the 90s, and it just it's so tall and it looks like we may be able to climb up to the top. It's not roped off for anything and I'm not seeing anything online or on the signs around here saying that we can't. So hopefully we can go up there and get a lookout. That would be so cool. What's really interesting about this Roman Catholic church is it's literally, so here's the tower and then right there is the memorial to the Orthodox Christian church. So just these two religions have these major religious centers right next to each other. Just, it's super cool to see stuff like that when the two religions are just interconnected right next to each other. I'm talking kind of quietly right now because this is a really peaceful place to be and there's just no one around. It's so beautiful. We're gonna try to climb to the top of the tower. We looked everywhere that we could find online and we didn't see anything about it not being allowed. The closest we saw was people, oh, it is closed, Never mind. Let's say the closest we saw were people saying that it was closed off and it didn't look closed, but this show's closed. <laughs> so never mind. We got up one flight of stairs. <laughs> it would've been cold. Yeah, okay, well that makes sense. I don't know if that tower is ever open to climb, but the views have gotta be amazing from the top seems like a fun little activity if you can. I mean, look at that thing. That's so tall. I think it'd be really fun to climb up. Maybe it's a good thing the stairs were gated off because we would have been right at the top for all of those bells. Our ears would not have enjoyed that very much, I don't think. <laughs> It's about time for lunch, so we're gonna go get some food. We're actually heading to one of the places that our waiter recommended on the handwritten note of uh, recommendations that he gave us yesterday. So we're excited. It doesn't look like it's exactly traditional food, but we're hoping that it'll be good because he said it's one of his favorites. 
I think the language barrier can actually sometimes be kind of fun between people that, like us and people that don't speak English. Like, we were just trying to order and I was trying to pronounce some of the dishes in, you know, a, a, like a Serbian accent. I was trying to uh, pronounce the Serbian words. And if, even if you don't get it right, at the very least, you can make the person laugh. <laughs> and that's what I did. So it, it, it makes it at least a, a more fun experience than just like pointing to the picture or just saying the word in English. That's what we're called. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm. My meal, especially for this lunch, is not traditional. If you want to see us eating more traditional food, check out our video from yesterday where we had some chibafi. But we've had chibafi so many times over the last month, we were really, really craving something different. Marsha still kind of got something traditional. What is... Cry, it's Kraina stew. Kraina stew, which smells so good. It was passed under my nose to get to Marshall, and that was, it smelled amazing. I'm so excited to try it. <laughs> that is an amazing fry. That's like the best seasoned fry I've had in a while. Is it like Cajun seasoning? Yeah. It just cut. I'm just gonna enjoy this fry. <laughs> I didn't realize how hungry I was until that fry touched my mouth. Along with our fries, we got some fried chicken covered in sweet chili sauce. That does not taste like what I was expecting. You. <laughs> but that's really good. This is going to be really, really great. Got the food dances. <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. It has actually more spice. Really? Yeah, there's more spice than, ever than everything else we've had. That makes it go so well with the um, with the sour cream that's in it. And there's like um, I think there's beef chunks and vegetable chunks. This is this is seriously one of the best stews we've had. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of the spicier things we've had. Well, the only spicy thing we've had in this town. Seriously, the only spicy thing we've had like <laughs> this entire trip. But I'm awful with spice, and I think this will be just fine. Once again, we found a meal with some amazing prices. For all of that, it was about $10. It was 20, 21 Bosnian marks, yeah. so such an incredible price. And we're just a block away from the main square. So I don't know, I'm, I'm curious how expensive stuff gets here because obviously there are very classier, very much classier restaurants than what we're going to, but everything has been so reasonably priced. It's amazing. And here we are in front of the church, seriously a 30 second walk from the restaurant we just had lunch at. And now maybe you can understand my confusion of Marshall saying that the first church was slightly similar to this one because the style just looks exactly the same to me. We made it to the Christ the Savior Church and this is incredibly beautiful. I feel like we said that in pretty much every vlog about everything we've done. but. It is an incredibly beautiful church. The church that we went to earlier today was a memorial to this church. So this is the original one. What's really cool about this site is they actually have some of the ruins from the original building up at the front and they show a little story of, of what happened. It's a really beautiful site and it's just right in the middle of town. So it's definitely one of the places that you have to go see when coming here. sites that we visited today we felt it was right to just stand outside and admire all the structures from the outside because there's really not a lot of tourists in Banja Luka and so everybody in these establishments are just normal people worshiping and we felt wrong going in just to take pictures so that's why we've been staying outside everywhere but the next stop that we're going to is not gonna be like that we are going to the Castel Fortress so we were gonna be out walking around so it'll be a little bit change of pace Another thing to note about the religious sites here is that in a lot of cities that we visited, they're very lenient about the kind of clothing that you're allowed to wear when visiting those places. Here, however, they seem to be a lot more strict and they want you to be wearing more conservative clothing to be able to go inside. And it seems like they very much will turn you away if you're not doing that. 
So just be prepared if you come here and you want to go to some of those sites, just be prepared to dress for the day. One of the weird things that I was super excited for about traveling to Banja Luka was the fact that the majority of the population is Serbian and they speak Serbian. So, or sorry, the, the majority of the population are Serbs and they speak Serbian. So what that means is that even though the language is really similar to a lot of the other Balkan languages like Slovenian, Croatian and so forth, they use the Cyrillic alphabet, which is the same alphabet that, like Russia, Ukraine, and uh, Bulgaria uses. And I just think it looks incredibly cool. So it's just been really awesome seeing all the signs in the Cyrillic alphabet. I, I just think it, it makes for a much more interesting traveling experience. That's just a, a, a little difference that makes this place feel much more different than it actually is. And I really enjoy it. Is that as tall as you can get? <laughs> Is that as close as you can get? I <laughs> see so you literally just get to walk on the castle wall or on the fortress wall. Seems pretty well fortified. I don't think I would be able to climb up that much. Well, clearly you're not a skilled art Like you. That was a super tall tree. Whoa. <laughs> Why do you do that every time we're on something high? So there's, I guess the, um, the wall is hollow. And there's passageways going around. I really wish this wasn't gated off so we could go in. Okay, Don't you? It's gated off. It looks creepy. <laughs> I think it'd be cool. So if you can't tell from just walking around, this place is incredibly old. Some accounts say that it was built in the third century and then um, I'm not exactly sure what happened between these times but in I think 1527 it was taken over by the Ottoman Empire and oh whoa <laughs> Wait. just pulled up on this wow Serena How deep does this go? This is crazy. It's so much darker in person than on camera. I can't believe this is just open. It goes so much further. How far did you go? Uh, <laughs> I just went around the corner. And it keeps going? Yeah, I couldn't see the end. That little plaque that I was reading says it has hidden passages to get to the water. So oh, really? Maybe that's what that is. That would be cool. This is by far one of the best things about going to places with pretty much no tourists. Is like, there's really nothing blocked off. Like, we're just getting to walk through all these tunnels and like, I guess what used to be secret passageways. In any of the other places that we've been, all of this would be boarded off. But here, we can just walk among the ruins and there's no one here. I think this fortress has genuinely been one of the coolest things that we've seen on this trip just because of how many of these like underground passages there are. It's just so fun that we got to walk through some of them. I'm not gonna walk through that one because we've already seen some snakes on this trip, but cool to see. So we just walked out of the fortress and decided to go on the path just right around the outside of it. And it is so beautiful walking right in between the river and the fortress. This is just so peaceful. The water is moving so fast so you can hear just the sound of water. It's so relaxing out here. There are a ridiculous amount of mosquitoes though. So if you come down here, make sure you bring some bug spray. But just look how tall this fortress is from down here. I mean, this is level with my head and then it just it goes so high up so 
if you don't like heights, maybe don't walk on it like we were doing earlier, but just come down here and admire it from the ground because it's pretty amazing. And for our last stop of the day, we have something that we both think is super cool. It is the, uh, I'll have to put the name here, the name of the mosque, but it's a mosque and it was actually destroyed in the 90s, I think 93, during the Bosnian War. But just back in 2016, it was rebuilt. And so I think it's a really cool symbol of like more acceptance happening in this region and just moving back to more um, living amongst each other. So we're excited to see it, definitely. Well, that was our last stop for the day. We just made a market stop to pick up our incredibly unhealthy dinner and snacks for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're taking a bus to Sarajevo, so we will see you guys there.